I'm back out here on the property today. My original plan was to finish cleaning up this trailer, but it seems like Mother Nature has different plans for us. It snowed the other day, it rained last night, and then it froze this morning. It's about 24 degrees out today, so there's not much I can do with the frozen trailer. All the debris frozen down to the base of it. I'm not getting it up today. There's no way. So I'm moving to plan B. I got a fire to keep warm. Dana and Kirk and Riley are back in Lancaster. They're gonna do some laundry at the laundromat and they're gonna grab some hot dogs and hamburgers to bring back from the campfire. And my plan B for today is I'm gonna get out here and I'm gonna start clearing some paths for the fence lines for the spring for the goats. So. I'm going to go warm up by the fire real quick and then get to work. how not to cut a tree down. It's amazing how just a couple of trees like that can change the landscape so much. I just finished cutting these couple trees down here and it sounds like Dane is back with my coffee. So, coffee break. I don't know how I could survive doing this without granite grind. There she is. There's the coffee fairy. Thank you, coffee fairy. You're welcome. Oh. Happy juice. Yeah, I got happy feelings now. <laughs> now I can go another eight hours without eating 
and still continue to work. Now the coffee breaks over, it's time to start cutting again. I got my work cut out for me. Most of this stuff here is going to be a springtime job because most of it's frozen into the ground. I'm not able to move it. So I'll just cut as much as I can for now and I'll really figure out what's going on in the spring. Not exactly sure what I'm going to do with all this wood here. The only thing I can do right now is just pile it up, wait for the springtime and burn it. Or in the spring I can start finding areas to build hooper culture beds. Hooper culture, if you're not familiar with it, is a series of logs and other composting materials you build up into a mound and then you plant your, your fruit trees and your perennials on top of that. It doesn't have to be fruit trees and perennials, but that's most likely what I'll do. Pretty nice pile for just a couple standing dead trees I'm clearing out for the fence line. I can't imagine how big the pile would be if I picked up all the waste the loggers left behind and then of course all the trees that I'm gonna cut for making pasture. I'm not gonna cut a whole bunch because my plan is to make silvo pasture, but there's gonna be a lot of standing dead like this too. That's going to have to come down. That pile would have to be 60, 70 feet tall by 100 feet wide by the time I'm done. Can't imagine how big it would be. It's probably, it would probably be a lot bigger than that, to be honest with you. But we'll have to leave that up to our imagination. Because there's no way I'm getting all that up at one time. Just got to do a little bit at a time. sitting here thinking to myself carrying these back and forth you know I know I got like 15 subscribers and all but hey if anybody wants to donate a tractor that'd be great right about now big mushrooms I could be wrong but I think it's it's a horse hoof mushroom I don't know I won't eat it unless I know what it is and I don't know mushrooms so I don't eat them but I've been told that if it grows on wood you can eat it don't take my word for it though Like I said, I'm taking tractor donations.
So with any luck, in the springtime, we'll be able to get the camper trailer torn down to the frame, weather cooperating, and everything goes to plan. We'll have the tiny house project almost completed by July or August. What I would like to do after that is get stone and gravel brought in, level this whole area off here. Because all this is all low-lying area and it's wet. The spring is right up around this pine here, maybe about 50 feet up that way. And it comes down right through this path, right by these logs, and it comes off back over this way and it creates a wet spot over there. But the other problem we have is it comes down to this low-lying area and it floods this area out you know, a little bit over by the camper trailer. So we want to get this leveled off and the plan is to develop the spring, trench this area out, put a culvert in here so we can utilize this old logging road and put a trench all the way down through this way. Right between those pines there on the other side of the hill. And then I'll show you the rest down here. This whole hillside here, right at the base here, I'll put a map in so you can actually see what I'm planting. But these hills, I want to put fencing around it for the goats all the way down to that corner to the end of the hill. I want to keep this open right here, this pathway. You can imagine fencing on both sides of this. The path would be nice and level going through here. And then right about here in this area, there's a high point on the hill here and a high point on the hill here. I know it sounds crazy, but I want to put a suspension bridge in so the goats can go back and forth right over top of the pathway. And you don't have to bother them. We don't have to open up any gates and they can just continue on about their business right over top. What could be cooler than that? A goat suspension bridge. And then as you continue out here, then as you continue out here, to my left here, I like to dig this whole area out right here, right at the base of the hill, and create a pond. And that pond will be fed right around the corner from the spring. The spring comes up from right there, and then this whole area is wet in here. You can actually see a little bit of it over there with the cattails. So if we create a pond here, give that water a place to go, and then trench it out and continue it off that way. And I'm not quite sure what we'll do with it after that, but that's downhill and that goes towards the Sheridan Brook. What we do with it after this point, I'm not sure. Well, time will only have to tell. On the other side of the ducks here, plan on having the goat shack and the winter paddock area for the goats. I'm thinking maybe right behind where these logs are will be the goat shed. Kind of where the chainsaw is, if you can see that. And the plan for that is to have the goat shed built into the side of the hill and have a turf roof on top. It's kind of like the idea of having a root cellar. It maintains a more stable temperature all year round. So with it being built to the side of the hill and it being insulated, it should maintain a pretty good temperature. Another reason for starting the operation right here in the middle of the property, where the log yard it was, is I can move the animals with minimal effort and it's right dead in the center of the property. So it's easy to move them anywhere else on the property because this area right here is where they put all the logging roads leading up to. So I can fan out in that direction down there, this way and that way, I can move in any direction I want. And I can watch the land over the next few years and really decide where I'm gonna build the permanent structures. The other plan is to build our permanent house up on the hill on the highest point, which is probably, I'd say about 600 feet up that direction. That is, that's about the highest point on the property. It's about 1,100 feet. And where we're standing right now is about 800 feet. So when we build the house up there, we'll be able to see the layout of the entire farm and the White Mountains behind us. So with that being said, I think I'm going to call it quits for today. Go hang out by the fire for a little bit, warm up, and then we're going to get heading home.